I'm Megan. I'm Nick. This is baby Aria. <laughs> this is Quigley. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our tiny, tiny house. house. Okay. We're here in the tiny house. There's our front door. Look how pretty it is. There's Quigley. Quigley, are you going to give the tour? There's not a whole lot to it, obviously, because our bed is where the living room should be. Um, it's a bit more compact in here. So we have a couch and a half is what they call it. Approximately four people can fit in here. You'll notice a gate here. Um, this is for Aria, so she doesn't go under the bed or she's not pulling a bunch of stuff out. We have a small table over here that does fold out if we need to use it. Aria's toy box is down here and we have this big flat screen TV. I have this blanket back here because we have the AC plugged in right now. Their AC is actually right over there and it has this huge tube that looks really ugly. We also have Aria's high chair. So that high chair is really cool because it's a foldable high chair. So we were inspired to live in the tiny house community uh, after we lived in an apartment for over seven years. Uh, we lived in a one bedroom, one bath apartment. And when we started, we were paying like $700 a month. And then when we left, they wanted like $1,500, $1,600 a month. And we were like, bye, we're not paying. That's a mortgage or you know no we're not doing that but we couldn't really afford a house because we didn't have money saved for a down payment on a house so it was kind of like okay well what do we do so we ended up finding tiny houses we've been living in the tiny house for about three years space and privacy are probably the two challenges but also we're living a much simpler life um, you definitely have to like the person that you're living with or live by yourself just because um, it's there's nowhere to go. Our apartment was 720 square feet and our tiny house is 400 counting the lofts. Uh, the main floor is maybe 220 square feet. So even 700 square feet to 400 is a huge, huge difference. And it takes a lot of um, downsizing, patience and adjustment. But thankfully when this house, this tiny house was being built, we lived in my parents' trailer. And then when we moved here, um, the tiny house is bigger than my parents' trailer. So it was like, oh my gosh, this place is huge. Not huge whatsoever, but it felt huge. Um, and then once we moved all our stuff and we're like, oh, it's not really that big. <laughs> We had our tiny house built by a company called Vintage Cottages and Tiny Homes. It took about three months or so for them to make it. We had a lot of say in what we wanted to do, um, but communication did become a problem because we were talking with the owner who then would relay our message back to the build team and some messages weren't getting relayed or he would say, oh yeah, we can do this and this and this and then our build team would say, we can't do that or vice versa you know he was like oh no we can't do that and then our build team would go well we can do that so we ended up just kind of communicating with our build team the most expensive thing was probably adding onto our tiny house so we added two feet onto our tiny house along with enclosing the kitchen um i know like per square or like per foot per linear foot it was like 950 dollars um, the most unexpected was probably our loft. They had put the windows in for the outside of the house and we were measuring and we're like, what, isn't that loft supposed to be lower? The most unexpected thing also probably would have been the plumbing. We were originally told that, oh yeah, all you have to do is hook up and go. My grandfather is a plumber and he came out and looked and he was like, y'all are missing a ton of stuff. And we ended up spending an extra $500, $600 in pipes and stuff that goes with plumbing I don't know but there was you know that was an extra expense that we weren't expecting because we were told it's a hook up and go and it's not a hook up and go it approximately costed us about $34,000 to build the house um, and that's not bad um, it definitely wasn't what I would call turnkey ready but we knew that he basically puts up the walls windows insulation floors roof electric plumbing and you do all the rest. So we ended up spending about an additional $6,000 uh, for the appliances. 
What's different about our bedroom than most tiny house bedrooms is that our bedroom is on the first floor. A lot of tiny houses, you'll see them in lofts. But our bed actually has one of those like a uh, machines where it goes up and it goes down. Um, and we really, really liked that, especially when I was pregnant. <laughs> that was really helpful getting in and out of bed. Um, so we ended up having this bed stay downstairs. And because it's actually super high, we use the underside of the bed for storage, which is super great. We also have two closets. This closet is a work in progress. And this is the stairs that lead to the loft, uh, which will be Aria's loft. My dad and husband, Nick, ended up building this porch. Uh, the one thing I'd probably change is maybe I'd add an overhead. On the other side of our porch, uh, we have our freezer here and our grill. This freezer we've had since we've lived in our apartment um, and it fits everything that our inside freezer doesn't fit. This is our truck box. It's just sitting on top of here. It's not attached to anything, but we don't move our tiny house enough that we have to worry about that. Uh, but this just holds our extra stuff. So we have like a tent in here, chairs, things that we don't use every day outside. So our tiny house is run purely on electricity. Um, we don't have any solar panels or gas. Uh, it'd be cool if we had solar panels, but we don't. We're just simple folk out here. The biggest worries about living in a tiny house is if we're gonna have everything in a house that we want and still be able to, you know, live comfortably. We accomplished all that with our tiny house, being there for the design of it, being there for as they were, it was being built, checking in all the time. The open concept version of our tiny house that I call it, it's more suited to us instead of having a bunch of nooks and crannies and things hidden away here. We would only change like two things about our tiny house. We originally talked about having a L-shaped kitchen that came over, countertop came over and next to the stove. Our builder talked us out of it. Um, we saw it as, you know, okay, we'll go this way, it'll be fine. Now it just doesn't work for anything. The only other thing I change is the outside. Half is wood, half is painted siding. And I would prefer just to have full painted all the way up. I'd also it's, get a bathtub. A bathtub would be nice. Especially when you have a kid. Which we didn't have a kid then, but we have a kid now. So right by the front door is what we've made our entryway. Nick has a hook and I have a hook. This curtain rod goes to our bedroom that has our blackout curtains. I've added some hangers and these are where Arya's jackets go. What's really important for us to have a stove for the most part. Standard size stove is about like 30 inches. This is 24 inches. So we have our counters and our cabinets here. So earlier we had talked about the fact that we don't like this kitchen. Uh, and we don't like this kitchen very much because there's this dead space over here. We have, we put our water and our soda, like extra stock here, but um, it's like, you just can't, even when the soda and the water's not here, it's very hard to stand here and open a drawer or anything like that. So you kind of have to like stand to the side and do it. And there's just this dead space here and it's, horrible. We absolutely hate it. This holds a lot of our stuff. It holds Ari's bathtub. Underneath the sink is where our water heater is and our cleaning supplies. We have a standard 25 inch sink and we have a microwave that uh, takes up a whole lot of space as well. One thing we have that not a lot of tiny houses have is a dishwasher. I did look at smaller dishwashers but they tend to come with a lot of problems, so I just went standard size on that one. This is not your standard size fridge, it's actually 24 inches. But anyway, this is why we have an outside freezer, because this is like a small apartment freezer. I thought I would show you the setup that we use uh, when we give Aria a bath. We've been giving her a bath like this since she was born. You just put the foam insert inside the tub, and it helps them not slip around. Her bath toys. This is the bathroom and it's about three feet long and barely three feet wide. Here's the wall, here's the door. I mean, it's, you can't spread your arms out. Well, you can this way, but not this way. Um, so the bathroom is just your pretty average bathroom. We have a standard water running toilet. We don't have a compost toilet like most tiny houses have. Uh, the builder didn't even provide us with that option. That was kind of our only option. Uh, 
Then we have a small sink over here. Uh, the original design actually didn't have a sink. We added one. Um, a lot of people just use their kitchen sink, but I really wanted a sink where we could like brush our teeth, wash our hands after doing our business. Our shower is just your standard 32 inch shower. Um, the original design actually had a door that was a swinging door that went into the kitchen, but I just felt like that was um, way too like much space. It was gonna cause a lot of problems trying to get in and out. If like somebody's in the kitchen and I'm in the bathroom and I swing open the door, I'm gonna hit them. So we decided to get a pocket door. Slides open, slide shut. It's really hot in the summer and it's really cold in the winter because there's not proper ventilation in here. We have one window and that window barely does anything. Um, so we do have a fan here during the summer but it doesn't always work um, because the kitchen is right next door and the kitchen gets sometimes just as hot as the bathroom. I'm literally sweating right now. It's so hot in here because I don't have the fan on. So this is our washer and dryer and we were really adamant about having a full-size washer and dryer. I've read about all-in-ones and they're okay. Um, I think they were, they're better now than they were when I was looking at them. But we just got these and we got a stacking kit and it works perfect. And then we just keep our laundry basket on top and then we have our dirty laundry basket down here. Definitely try to live in a tiny house. I know they have Air Airbnbs or like little tiny house hotels. Try to stay in those if you can and get an experience of what tiny house living is. Because I think, um, especially for us, when we went and toured our tiny house, they were empty. So you could fit 10 people in an empty tiny house and you're like, wow, this is so big. Then you add walls, flooring, stuff, and it just becomes so much tinier. So Nick loves open concept and I do too, except obviously this is a tiny house. So having walls is something that I would have really loved. I would have loved to enclose this bedroom. We have blackout curtains, which are behind me right now, but that's it. There's no fourth wall to this bedroom. So yeah, that's kind of the downside of the, of the bedroom is because if one of us is up late watching TV or whatever else, it really does kind of interrupt your sleep pattern. I would say that's kind of a misconception is when you tell people that you're living in a tiny house, they're like, oh, like you guys have to like hand wash your clothes and you have to like, you know, pedal your bike to make your own electricity, don't take baths on a regular basis or, you know, and it's just kind of like, that is not what tiny house living is. In a way, it's a lot like living in a trailer. I mean, especially ours because it's on wheels. A lot of people thought that we were gonna be like living off grid and uh, that is not the case whatsoever. If you can live off grid, you know, purely so solar panels or people have those like little bikes that they pedal to get electricity and stuff, great if you can do that. Um, that just wasn't functional for our life. I would say that our tiny house isn't as cool as other tiny houses. Our tiny house is just pretty much this blank box, if you will, and we put our stuff in it. Nick didn't want these like nooks and crannies and where you fold out this and it's a table or you fold it another way and it's a couch. I would have loved that. Um, Nick was not into that. And I get that to a point where, you know, if you're gonna pretty much be having it just be one way, then you don't need to have all those cool gadgets or cool ways to fold something that makes it three different things because you're just going to be using it that one way. My biggest worry was I didn't think Nick was going to like it because I was the one who did a lot of the research and Nick was kind of being like, okay, going along with it. And um, I think he was pretty unsure until we actually moved in and he goes, this is awesome. And I was like, whoo, thank God he likes it because if he didn't, I don't know what I would do. So this is Aria's little bedroom, if you will. We don't put much storage under her pack and play, um, maybe some like extra diapers or wipes, but that's pretty much it. We try not to put anything under there because it usually gets lost. This is Aria's kind of storage closet of clothes. Um, when she eventually moves to her loft, these little storage containers can fit under her bed, but right now they're down here. So this is Aria's loft and um, originally when we got the tiny house, this was supposed to be Nick's game room loft, um, but it, it ended up turning into our cat Callie's loft. So she had her litter up here, her food, 
and it ended up also being a guest room for anybody that needed a sleepover. Uh, when we had the loft originally, there was no wall or railing or anything. It was just open to the other side, which for airflow was super great, but not really safe when you have people sleeping up here or the cat up here or even a toddler. Kind of a downer about having this back wall is the ventilation isn't that great up here. So um, that's something that we kind of have to work on and figure out how we're going to get this room ventilated properly for when Ari does sleep up here. So the last part we have to do is this part here where the stairs are. We need a railing of some sort, but it's kind of become um, hard to figure out just because the light is over here and that's the only light that leads into this room. So we don't want to do a wall because it'll block off that light. I know we've had a lot of struggles from trying to find out how to do things, but if we just take a few minutes and think of something, we actually worked out everything. Invest in jacks if your tiny house. Jacks, yes. Yeah, invest in jacks if your house moves. Um, and also insulation for the tiny house was also super hard. We had to come up with a different way to like skirt around the tiny house because it would the floor would get so cold during the winter time. The, like our thirteen or our nineteen styrofoam sheets. Yeah. And then we cut those down and put them up on the side of the house. That way then it stays nice and hot. Um, one other thing for your tiny house, don't do your dryer vent underneath the house. Have it come out the side. Uh, going straight down is not good. You have to clean it out quite often. If you do get a tiny house and you decide to have someone build it, be there for the design. If you don't like something the way they have it, tell them. And um, lay it out in how you would feel comfortable. Don't think you're overstepping by bothering the builder. It's your house. That's what you're supposed to do. 